Be good? Yeah, it'd be great. What are you going to do? You want to make some Turkish blend while we do our show? I mean... Is that what you need to keep your hands busy? Yeah. All right, here we go. Good evening, universe. This is Alex Soto with an ep episode of Articulate Barbarian. And with me today is another local person on the sound, on the scene with the music. And this is just, again, some of that seasoning in that pan that I like to talk about. Mm -hmm. Local music that brings local flavor. DJ Damage. So, what up, motherfucker? On, How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Good to you see you. It. So Damn. DJ Damage got... Every time I see DJ Damage, he's being thrown into a hornet's nest. First time I fucked with you was at my Grown and Sexy show that I did. Shout out Thomas Mosley. Shout out Diamond Sports Bar. If he actually listened to these episodes or watched them and saw how much times I would talk about his fine establishments, he probably ought to give me a raise considering oh. he doesn't pay me shit right now. That'd be a nice little come up, wouldn't it? But boy, I'm promoting the shit out of him. I tell you what, you were there that night. We had yeah. we had people from the villages. We had old white ladies. We had my family was up in that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. And then I, it was so there. funny because this one old lady, shout out Joyce. This chick comes to all my shows, man. She looks as comfortable in a room with pot smoke being smoked around her as she does in the country bar. Most of it She's was a me. bad bitch, man. I talked to her boy. I go, I can't help but notice you just seem so comfortable in interesting situations. Cause see, them old people in the villages, man, they're no joke. They got some stories now. Yeah. I mean, I they got they got they were there when there was there. They they started the shit. You know what I mean? I tell you. And it's funny too because you know the is that I know you guys are from well you're from Ocala right is that where nah, you're nah I'm actually not I'm actually from, uh, born and raised originally in Providence Rhode Island uh, so it's by Massachusetts right you know what I'm saying um I lived in West Palm for most of the West Palm Beach most of the time I've been in Florida shout out West Palm yeah 561 you my know. sister's down there oh yeah yeah, yeah, she's off of Okeechobee. Well, actually, she's just moving into. Um, I used to live off Okeechobee. Yeah, where the hell is she moving to? What's the where where uh, where the where the polo is? Where is that shit? You're talking where, about where, where the old people. Wellington. Live. She Wellington. just moved into Wellington right, by Royal Palm Beach. Right, right. That's yeah, where she yeah, was, yeah, Royal yeah. Palm, and now she moved around the corner. That's money out there. Oh you no, no. Hey, you my you my sister, my, my sister's the baller in the family. Huh? She owns five Domino's pizzas. Oh, that's lit. Yeah, and she's self-made, bro. She she earned that. She earned her stripes. She got a couple of fucking Domino's pizza Rolexes. Mm. That's when you make some kind of big thing happen. She's done it a couple times. Mm. So shout out Krista Soto, you bad bitch, you. Mm -hmm. Much love. Actually, she's like a second mother to me because she's the she's the firstborn, and I used to always joke and say she should have been the oldest son. Because she's the one that broke out and made this huge success story. And I ended up raising two daughters by myself. Oh, man. <laughs> so, and I was like, not that I should have been a daughter, but fuck, man. What the hell? <laughs> so my sister is like sex in the city, man. She's got an entourage of beautiful Slitty. people. And she's hooking me up. with You want to talk about some future opportunities? Because the people she runs with owns these big nightclubs and shit. So Boy. we got some things in the work for West Palm. We're coming for your ass. Yeah, West Palm's lit. The party scene is definitely dope out there. Well, I'll be honest yeah, with you. My, scene, my Favorite, my favorite vibe in that area is Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, Fort Lauderdale. Fort great. Lauderdale Lauderdale's to me uh, seems uh, like nine five four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fort Lauderdale always four, felt man. like to me the working class South Florida. Like what? Like like West Palm and Miami was a little too much on that bougie shit. Okay. But Fort Lauderdale always seemed like real motherfuckers. You know what I mean? You go out to the club and you don't have to have a damn. Yeah, nothing aggravates me more than going to a hip hop fucking club talking about I need to wear a certain dress code. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, yeah, this I, is I, a hip hop. I, I, I'm listening to. To, at the time it was little John come old but the point is is I, I'm, I'm here it's all you know but they're like no and then they're letting all the bitches go through because it's South Florida dog yeah and I'm not saying that I don't deserve to go in over a fine bitch but the fuck man, nah, I got nine money. out of ten times they'd rather have them in there no I died nine out of ten, ten times time. so do I <laughs> but so that being said so, Fort Lauderdale always gave me love like normal everyday shit so yeah. I just I always felt like that was my so that's why if you notice when I go out at night and when I go out on the weekends and perform I always perform in these elaborate outfits you know these like Bernie Mac shits because <laughs> I, I never ever ever want to be told I can't go somewhere so I always so now I dress up. like Cedric and shit and that's always been my dress code during the week I just you know wear right. casual these are my rock and roll jeans I just bought them I don't know how I feel about them I don't know we'll see how it works out right 
So, so tell me what's up, man. So now, okay, so by way of West Palm, how long have you been in this area? On and off since 03, actually. I, was, I went to high school here, basically. I moved down here. Like so where? Now, Forest, North Westport. Man. Oh, they call Westport. Westport. Or whatever the fuck fucking call. Westport. Yeah, that's kind of a high school. Class 07. That's yeah, like that. Of. That's that fringy part of Marion County that's way out there. You're kind of a mixture of people that... It's, it's a smaller school, isn't it, compared to the other schools? Nah. Actually, they used to have a middle school there, too. Yeah, I remember. To it, I remember. I remember. Closed that, and then they turned that into the rest of the high school. Okay, so, so when I remember... It, the both the schools and it was a bit I smaller. I think I was like in ninth grade at that time. Oh yeah. When it was like both together. Westport. That's like North Marion. North Marion's kind of Marion County. Yeah. You know, I went out I there. Think it's more like North, North Marion. Yeah. Shout out North Marion, you redneck motherfuckers. <laughs> Damn, dude. I, I I I had to go every year to watch my daughter do some bullshit. Flag. Mm -hmm. a no man, I asked you for a lighter. What about them Crystal River boys? Y'all got a lighter over there, gentlemen? Mm. Try to FIFA gag in here with me, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to them in a we'll second. We'll get to them hey, in a second. Hey, you know, it's all good. We'll get, they, they just might have a lighter. No, no lighter? No, I got it, though. We good. I was about to say, do I need to get up in the middle of my show and go out to my car and get a lighter? I will. So, all right. So, on and off. You went to high school here. Now you're back. What, you got some people who live out here? Yeah, actually, um, my parents live out here. They live towards Denellin out there in Rolling Hills. That's kind of the reason we moved out here. My I know where all that shit land. is. I know Dun Allen. I know all that shit. River Boys. <coughs> yeah. So, um, Shout out them River Boys. Mm -hmm. Goddamn Gator Riders. Yeah, man. So I graduated. Sketchy. Graduated high school. A um, couple months after that, I moved to Rhode Island. Moved back out there. It was DJing clubs this out there. This is what years? 2007. Like, end of 2007, going into uh, 2008. All right, so that's, we're in the middle of shit. So you started DJing when? When a little bit before I moved, in 07. Before, a little so bit let I me ask you to, something. In 07, were they turntables or were there this new shit? With the CD on the disc. CD, it was CDJs. Yeah. It was CDJs. So what's up with the, the the discussion between old head DJs wanting to rap, wanting to scratch on real records, and new DJs that scratch with this new shit? I'm asking because I, I mean, look at it from the fringe. All I do is hear about it. My whole thing is you gotta respect the culture, man. You gotta, you know I mean, like these people going around calling themselves DJs, and can't DJ. It takes more. DJing is more than just press and play. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people right. don't understand that. You got to learn You got to learn what to play, depending on your crowd. You got to learn to read the crowd. You got to know, you know what I'm saying? You got You got to, you, basically, you got to mix. You got to learn how to, you know what I'm saying? The whole nine. And if this generation's a little different than me, because they don't know. Well, Latinos, you can't ever tell. You look like you're 15. How old are you? Who, me? Yeah. I look like I'm 15. That's good, man, because when I'm like 40... I still right, you might be 52. How old are you, man? 28. I'm 28. 28, okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it must be yeah, a blessing. That slide too, it must be. Oh, come on, dog. This is love, baby. This is love. We just having fun. This is, I am a fucking comedian. Look at this shit. You want to talk about comedy? This is some bullshit right here. Mm -hmm. look, at the, look at this shit. Hold up. This motherfucker. Get that shit off. God damn it. I just, it just breaks my heart. I got this. We're falling apart. I got this dumb laptop running this thing. I got a tower built. All I got to do is get it over here, but we're getting ready to do this project to put it in the sound room so everything's going to get all it's put all in. about elevator. Blah, blah, blah. It's always something. But anyway, so now, you got in, when, when did you start DJing? How old were you? 16, 17? About, yeah. Yeah. About 17. So, was it you always had a love for the sound? Who was your influences? Like, what got you, what, what got you love going? Love for music in general. Just like... The reaction people get when I play a certain song, or like the fact what what I love about DJing is like for example I play a song and then the people ask who is that? Mm. To me that's a drive. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I like that to break records, play different shit no one's ever heard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, it's it's. But as far as influences, you know what I'm saying? You you got the you got um shit. 
Let me see. How far do we want, how far back you want me to go? Man, all you gotta do is give me a couple of goddamn examples. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what like, I mean? you know, like, you know, the standards, well, you know, Biggie Smalls talked to me when I was younger, because that's who I love. But see, I was from, you know, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, the NWA, uh, yeah. NWA, Beastie Boys, 1986. I was there, they opened up for Run DMC. I saw the whole show at the uh, Orlando Civic Center oh, back in the day. You know, 1986, I'm 43, so hip hop, I was there when Rapper's Delight broke. Oh shit You know what I mean So I mean like I, I saw the birth of hip hop right. Back then it was just called rap Back then it was our sound Cause I remember um, uh, 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 What is it uh, Jam Pony Mm-hmm. I mean that's like you look that shit up on YouTube basically it was just this fucking music and the guy would just stop the shit and be like we're gonna get to it all day long <laughs> and that's like yeah. original but that was like you know four hours of shit and and you know uh, but I mean that's that was the birth of hip hop and, right. and now I'm seeing like young hip hop artists are throwing hate like they're like I don't even fuck with, I don't even know what bit Tupac sounds like they don't know but my question is is, is should they learn I of think course. they should learn I think everybody should know their history you gotta you know know what what I'm saying? like I said we gotta respect the culture but with with now here's the next question with music being so easy to put out now how so difficult as a DJ is it to filter through? How much shit do you listen to off the books? A lot of, a lot. I mean, you got to hear lot. some shit, right? I hear a lot of music. Cause how many? Like I don't. I'm not even. I'm a fucking. I'm a comedian. I'm a comedian promoter, a comedy promoter, and I do comedy shows. And I fucks with musicians on my on my podcast, but it's two separate entities. But you don't have any idea how many. On 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 Messenger, how many you know? Check out this latest mix. Oh yeah, and that, you know what I mean. And it's like holy shit! I had to, I don't even half the time I don't even pay attention. I don't even look. Half the time I don't even look. Chris River, y'all getting bored over there? Y'all getting antsy? It's starting to look like y'all four long y'all gonna start hitting each other, hitting each other with sticks and stuff. Mm, that's good. That's good. Yes, sir. But uh, influences, I have, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the DJ the DJ Pro Styles, I don't, know who, I don't know if you know who that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? The DJ Enoughs, the Funk Flexes, you know what I'm saying? Um, DJ Spinatic's a big influence, you know what I'm saying? I'll get, to, I'll get to that in a little while. You know what I mean? He's out of Tampa. He's actually Fat Joe's DJ now, big influence. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And that's somebody that I actually got up under. And just learning the game, man, you know what I'm saying? Learning the game little by little. And it just... It, 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 it just makes sense you know So I mean? Makes sense being, Okay so I try to explain To the universe How small the world is And how small our town is And the right. influence that we have The community that we're building It's different I, I honestly say It's the most unique Fucking environment I've ever been around And I go to Orlando I go to Tampa Shout out to both of them Big cities West Palm Miami mm-hmm. Shout out But my little local Small shit My little country towns I see this other kind of thing Coming out What I thought was so interesting Was Last week, um, shout out Devonte and whatever the fuck he represents. Oh, I get SG, all, okay. Yeah, I always, the table. Okay. Right. So last Friday right. night, I show. I get an invite to come and perform in Tampa, which I go out there and drive. I show for at night. So I was like, dope. So I'll swing in and go over there. Turns out, motherfucking DJ Damage was the DJ performing in Tampa. And I'm like three, five, two in the house. What the fuck? Because it's amazing. I'm booked there a lot to be honest. But I mean, that's. But it was a listen. Not that I don't even know you, dog. But it's like it, it, as a as a person who who loves his but town, saying, like, it was yeah, so it's cool. A, it's a surprise to see a small town. You know what I consider us? We're all small town boys. We gonna get to and that. And here too. we are. We gonna get to that. We're, and here we are in big city fucking Tampa. And I'm on the bill. You're on the bill. And some other some people who've been on this show. Shout out Nike. I don't know if. Uh, Oh boy, made it out. Uh, oh yeah, he was there. Yeah. So the point is, shout out Nike. Bro. You know, all them boys were out there, and and you know that group. How'd that group from Georgia do? Because they look kind of corny. I'm just saying. Group from Georgia. Yeah, that loud ass group that was there that took up the seats before I left. He was like swerve or snerve or some shit. He was saying uh, some talking about that that had like all the same color shirts. Right. So, hey, all right. They did all right. You know, okay, because they drove. You know, you know I, I remember like away games. <laughs> they were coming down, so so it was cool that they made it. I'm glad they did all right. All right. So um, what do you think? 
So yeah, man. So like I said, it was a, it was a proud time. So tell me, so so you started out at sixteen, and now tell me the direction that you want to take this conversation to. Because you're like, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Yeah. So which direction you want to go? Because I'm right here with you, dog. I mean, stream of consciousness. Going back to what you were saying mm -hmm. about um, the old versus going to the new. You know what I'm saying? It's just sometimes people speak without knowing. You know what I'm saying? And when I what I mean by that is. They don't understand it So therefore they don't know it mm -hmm. Like You got all these New age rappers Like the The, the young kids Just the, with the repetitive With the new The new wave And the new way You know Tight pants Female dressing Like oh all type God, of stuff Oh my god What is up with you know tight pants You I don't know. Your pants are kind of tight. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm playing. I'm no, playing, no, dog. I'm playing, he, dog. I'm playing, that, dog. I'm, that, that, I'm so fucking with you, dog. That, <laughs> I'm playing with you, dog. I'm playing with you, dog. I'm playing. Nah, man. <laughs> well, when he got on compared to nah, real shit though. Real shit though. When well, he got on compared to what we're talking about. These dudes wear damn near wearing tights, man. Damn People right, hand tights, like it's crazy. But these type of rappers don't know the baggy jean era, right? The 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 G unit, the right going back more, the big pun, right, Fano, right, Nas era, like you know what I'm saying? That era of music where you had to you had to be accepted. Not anybody can make it, right? Put a song but, that's repetitive, get the people streaming it, get the people buying it online, and you win the game. Simple. Internet and fuck the game up. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that the internet's fucked the game up. See, and you gotta realize something. I tell this to artists, I tell this to DJs, I tell this to promoters. If the internet were to shut down right now, will you still be relevant? I, I know I wouldn't be right work. now. I wouldn't be right now. <laughs> I do a lot of groundwork. That's why, for example, you, you went into that random ass club on a random ass night, and guess who was there? That's how it be. Oh, sometimes. listen, listen. You there's know? a whole mysterious side to Mr. Damage because I see his little name popping up all over the place. Yeah, that's the thing. That's far from local, yeah, man. I know, you know, know listen, man, uh, f f fear not. I'm, you're not here if it wasn't for the fact that I noticed you, oh, but I, I don't know where you are in the echelon. No, no, no. I have zero understanding. Hey, I just know for. We're here to change that. Right. I, oh, listen, <laughs> all I know is that random. Well, well what it was was let me, let me finish that fucking story. So the DJ that's supposed to do my show that we've been preparing for, who knew the set list, he was in Jacksonville that night. I'm like, what happened? He had a moment. He had a moment and he had to go. He just had to dip. Right. So then I guess you got the call from Mosley. So Thomas, because you you ended up being. You talking DJ. about Florida? Shout out DJ Florida, man. Fuck no, I ain't shout, shout out DJ, DJ Florida, Florida because if he was going through something bad, things, <laughs> things happen, man. It is what it is. The, right. I'm not. Out, I was. Man. Yeah. No. I got number love for Florida. Yeah, yeah. yeah I want to go on records that he's the one threw your name out there. I was keeping it on the DL because he just had to get out of town. What happened? So long what story short, too late. You came in the mix and you did a great job with what you had. <laughs> Fucking goddamn comics were changing the songs. I'm like, God dang, man, bring his own. Song. Shit. Shout out all them boys that night, Genesis and Zobo and all them people, Jesse Shanoose and Jason Henson, and it was a good show that night. We had a great Definitely. night, and we're gonna be getting a night at the big club <laughs> if Thomas could ever get through all that bullshit and get that big motherfucker open. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they lost a lot of good shows oh. doing that. With whatever the fuck was going on with the club. I'll tell you what's going on with the club. Fire marshal shit. You think the county wants these motherfuckers to be successful? Do you think that they're fucking th having him run through every hoop? Listen, I will tell you my biggest fear, and I love that motherfucker. But the, the deal that was made, the, the conversation we had earlier, it's all good. But nobody expected him to actually become successful. Oh, yeah. Renovate a whole plaza. Bring a whole community together. That's dope, man. Shout out to dope, Thomas, but, man. but what I'm getting at, though, is the, the, the powers that be don't like that. That's what I'm saying. So when, when when he told me that he's waiting the town on we in, man. But, but my point, is, is, my point is is when it, when he told me that he was waiting on a fire marshal to pass that, I was like, Oh my God. I pray for you, bro. And yeah. look, how many it's been months since that show. And it was supposed yeah. to be that day. Facts. So right. the point is they're gonna make him jump through every hoop. But the good news is that motherfucker's gonna be tight when we open that doors. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, ain't gonna do, ain't gonna do nothing about it. Can't do nothing about it. Have you been in that motherfucker? You know, yeah. But so I, I listen. said that when it was called Club Rush, right? So years the, ago, right? So the thing is, is the VIP is on the stage. Mm -hmm. That shit is beautiful, yeah. bro. That is yeah. not common. Yeah. Listen, I don't know that the world even understands what's in that fucking building. Big because big acts would come, comedian. They have even back in the day. There was <coughs> a lot of dope concerts there. Yeah, but I'm talking about 
a whole nother level big. Like if they wow. understood how elegant that fucking thing is inside. It's about location. They would do the shows there to make it look that look. You know what I mean? So my my dream is to blow everything up at once because my goal is to get somebody like Genesis or Jersey in there, do a monster set. Oh, you mean like for comedy? For comedy. Gotcha. Murder the room with tables, tablecloth, centerpiece, candles, beautiful, the chandelier, but working, the lights working proper, the whole stage with the throne and the birdcage right. and the dragons. And the whole thing about it is, is once that show is done, we're going to try to offer it to Netflix once we film it. It's dope. And I mean, we're talking cap. We're talking you doing the DJ in Florida doing the DJ and we're talking about everybody being in on it together. Then, check it out, double whammy in the magazine building the legacy and the whole article about how this is coming to be and how we're going to sell it to either Netflix, HBO, whatever and then to be continued. And what if, motherfucker? Here's the deal. You closing don't even have to... A, closing deals on a podcast. You see here? But here's the deal. You know what the... But here's the chant. Here's the deal. Even if Netflix offered us $1,000 for the show. Right. Okay? Even if they offered us $1,000 for that show, it immediately puts us... On a bigger... On a map. No fucking bigger map. I mean, we're going to walk right... I can walk into the improv and get a set to tour. You can... You got anybody who's involved in it. See what I'm saying? <laughs> That makes sense. So the whole show, everybody is going to blow up off of it. Cap's going to have his two cents in. Thomas Mosley's going to be highlighted. Everybody's going to get love. And then when the show blows, everybody's going to want to book that room. Right. See what I'm saying? I'm talking to everybody from every angle. You think anyone in the Southeast United States, when they found out something got on Netflix, you wouldn't think that they're not going to try to fucking book that room? Yeah. So the point is, is this is the, the dream. We're all thousandaires to become millionaires together. See what I'm saying? It's a lot easier when the rope's a lot stronger. And that's the vision. Right. And that's what I'm trying to do. So transitioning now, you came up. And now, when did DJ Damage become, what was the beginning of his, what made him, why is, motherfucker, I see you everywhere. There's a, I know a lot of DJs, I but just, I see you all over the place. The thing about me is this, like... So where is it, where it come from? Let's, let's, okay, let's... Where's the hustle? Let's just get, let's just... Break it down. Let's just get to the beginning, beginning. That's what you I'm trying to get to. For you, for you to understand what's going on now, you gotta understand what happened then. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, let's take it back to, okay, moved to Rhode Island. Started DJing, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, parties, fucking random uh, college events, because, you know, they got URI over there. Right. You got uh, the community college, which I live right down the road, because my uncle had a spot right down the street gotcha. from there. So, when I lived, uh, when I moved up there, I lived with them for a little while until I got my own spot, or everything like that. I was there for probably about a year. Moved back down here. I had my son, you know what I'm saying, and I kind of just stepped back for about a year or so. What's the little booger's name? His name is Nicholas. Shout out Nicholas in the future. Five, five, ten years from now. Five, he'll be. Well, up Twenty up years from now. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? The dad thing was a whole new lane for me, so I just didn't know how to balance it. So I said, you know what? Let me just leave this to the side. My son needs me now. Okay. Respect. You know? And, um... Somewhere there's an ex. That's bullshit! That's why I ain't even mention it. Well, something that still don't gotta be explained. You know what I'm saying? I, I had a dude on the show and he was telling me he has two kids. I said, oh yeah, how far away are they apart? He said, oh, he said two months. Oh. I thought he was gonna say two years apart, you know? Oh, and I looked months? at him and I go, how's that possible? He looked at me and goes, you know how that's possible. Nah, that's <laughs> uh, uh. So... So continuing on, now you, uh, you you became a dad, you did the dad thing, yeah. and then you, what, got back in it? And then um, I just started linking up with random DJs. Like, it just randomly happened. Like, random DJs hit me up, hey, um, we got this going on, we know you used to try to, you know, we, we know you used to DJ, we trying to help you get back. I was random. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I was like, all right, cool. So I go to random meet and greets, met different people, different A&Rs, different tastemakers, like promoters and stuff like that. And, um got to networking more so i wasn't djing it was probably about a whole year that i went to different concerts met artists met djs met promoters met producers and i had these people already in my contacts like already you know we on networking regular. one day i said you know what i'm gonna start djing again it was one random fucking morning i don't i can't tell you today but i woke up and i said you know what 
I'm gonna start DJing again. Cause I used to rap too. Don't get me wrong. Mm. Every like one thing people don't know is every DJ can probably more than nine out of ten can secretly rap. Right. Cause if you gotta have an ear for it. Yeah, absolutely. You, know you gotta have the beat. Gotta have the timing. I used to DJ to promote my own shit. So I would play my own music. You know what I'm saying? So I had I was doing both at the time. My passion wasn't for rapping. I didn't want to live the rapper life, if that makes right, sense. Right, right. As a DJ, you get a little more privacy. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? The universe is going to hear all that chatter in the yeah. back. They don't know how sensitive these microphones good. are. It's all good. Let it's all good. Let them go. The universe right? loves that shit. They're going to try to separate our, what we're saying and what y'all are saying. They're going to start, and then they're going to start posting that shit. They talking about this. Why are they talking about that? <laughs> the universe good. is bad, boy. I don't know how they do it. They'll fucking start, they'll tell me about something, change the centerpiece back to the lion. What the fuck? What you worried about that for? <laughs> but it's the way it is You know how it is Social media Crazy These motherfuckers Talking about how much Weight I've gained Motherfucker I know I've gained weight <laughs> <laughs> So Alright Continuing forward You started DJing again started On a DJing. whim On a day You don't know what day But yeah. it ends at why Yeah and I was just like You know what I'm gonna start DJing again I know I know the people I know the enough, Like I know The amount of people That it's gonna take for me to start getting gigs. Like, you know what I'm saying? To getting back out there. So it's not like I just start from square one, like, oh, I have to go out now and do free shit. I did the groundwork right. before I started DJing. Right, right, right. So that way when I got back home, I already had it on reach. Hey, right. I want to DJ, give me a night. Right, right, right. And shout out to SG, man, cause SG to believe it or not, well, I started DJing again in at platforms in Ocala. Right. You know what I'm saying? At random clubs in Ocala. So shout out to him because he gave me the pa the platform to get back on. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And then he would he would book different um, he would book different celebrity acts to come perform and me DJ they set. So for me it was just getting back on it. It means like riding a bike. I never not or like forgot how to DJ. You know what I'm saying? That right. makes sense. Sure. So it was ride just, like, the bike. Yeah. I learned was on vinyl. Okay. I learned at like 12 years old fucking around. 12, mm -hmm. 13 years old. Wooka, wooka, yeah, wooka, yeah, wooka. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cause if, you gotta, if, if, you, if you could do it on a laptop, you got to be able to know how to, like I said, respect the culture. You got to know how to do it the original way. How good is it though? You can download any song when you want. Oh, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> it's amazing, man. isn't it? it it's, it's about working smart, not hard. Right. Me, back in the day, I know what it, DJs would bring crates. Crates. It would take... I remember Forever for them to Dog sleep. I was there Who wants to do that now Apparently some old heads still you do You know what I'm saying But you, I mean I get it I get it You gotta respect the culture I get it But at the same time Work smart now uh, I got you bro Hey listen I, This is a microwave paying, age bro They're paying The thing about promoters Is they're paying the, No matter what Equipment you bring Right You're gonna get paid The same amount of money To bring everything you got and if opposed to if you bring one or two things. Right, right, right. So think about it. No doubt, no doubt. I got you. No a Honda. But anyway. So now is this is when you say SG is break it down. So is you, SG you, a prom Yeah, he's De a promoter. Devante. Yeah. He's His a name okay, so should he be not I shouldn't even be saying Devante? Yeah. Is it, I mean, is, I is he in that. like secure what is it, a protection, witness protection program or anything? I, so no. SG, shout out SG. He'll be on the show soon because yeah. we're gonna be talking too. I mean, I'm getting all you fools before y'all disappear. Because everybody's blowing up. It's everybody's going to pop off. And the goal is perfect time. when you come back around when you're doing your big ass shit, you'll pop in and visit with me and talk course, shit for a little bit. Of course. You know what I'm saying? So, um, all right. So where are we at now? So now SG took, what, he he saw you performing or he now got I you? I just talked to him and said, right? look, I'm DJ. I was, I'm DJing again. No, oh, you okay. knew him from when you were in school? Nah, I no. knew him from just like going, you know, Other clubs networking in the clubs. Right. And he used to do club events and stuff. So he actually was running the nights and I would go with other DJs and meet with lo some of so, the local what, artists. This wasn't in Rhode Island. This was no, here. No, this is here. This is okay, I'm, moving I'm back. sorry. You, you, yeah, I already moved you're back. a good storyteller, but you didn't bridge that. Okay. So, okay. so, so like I said, I moved back. I had my son. People are eating popcorn now, listening to your story. Like, right, huh. right. Enjoy. I know. So um, so now you, you network here in Marion County and in the surrounding areas. Like you got Tampa, Orlando. Eight, right, Central Florida, Florida area, South Florida area. Make it easy on you. There's plenty of shit to do anywhere you want to go. You know what I mean? Right. So... And then you, you, you randomly hook up with these different dudes who have different promotions going, but you've been all over the place. You, you've been recently. What, what was that poster you sent me? Where were you at just recently? Oh, we just did the Thicker Than Water tour with YTC. Mm -hmm. Artists out of Tampa. We had OG Mago on the tour. Um, Shout out to all these knuckleheads. Reggie Mills on the tour. Um, 
Who else? We had uh, Lil Quill and Young Marley just signed to Gucci Mane. Um, Gucci Mane was actually on the tour. Shout the out to the ice cream cone. Feeling he did, that. <laughs> he did the last two dates on the tour. Those dates I actually couldn't make. But um, yeah, we had also Jay Critch who signed to Rich the Kid. Um, on the tour as well you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. it was yeah we went to first stop was um they did tampa i didn't make that one but we next next one was uh, i brought them to diamonds actually nice i brought them down to diamonds all the artists came you know what i'm saying um we ran it up it was a good night you know what i'm saying um then we went to orlando you know i try to explain to people what it's like to be on the floor performing they don't know and there's six eight feet and then there's just a wall of people and it, that's the your stage is the floor your eye level with those people and they're right in front of you i love that shit right there is no feeling in the world and that is a, such a crazy yeah, unique man. weird that's blip how in the it was universe too, on most of these dates because like i'd be looking at the laptop getting the music everything situated for the artist sets and stuff and i'd look up and there's a crowd oh shit what the fuck do these motherfuckers get here god damn and then you just gotta bring it. They bring it. And you gotta just snap into that mode. See, right. it's, like I said, it's just more than playing a song. Right. And saying a couple things on the mic. You gotta be in tune with your crowd. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Give them what they want. Prepare them to be hyped for when the artists come out. So I think, okay, now tell me if I'm wrong, because I'm coming at this from an outsider's perspective. Mm -hmm. So you are a DJ who performs. There's a lot of people in the room. You play music, they bop to. Then. Mm -hmm. There's affiliations with hip hop artists, and then you do the backup beats. No, I play their music for them while they like while, while they're, they're performing. performing. Right, so that's what I'm saying. You're doing right. the, the music. Forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. No, so you're, you, you're playing the music, and they're they're doing the. the right. So now that's that's like two totally different things, right? Because yeah. DJ, like you could be a DJ in front of a crowd of people playing two records. And never have anybody rapping more, with you, when right? When artists it's, perform, it's more the attention's less on you now. It's right. more on them. You know what I'm saying? Right. And performing. every, I mean, even I, as, as a as a comedian, needs a DJ. So like everybody who's anybody and who does any kind of show, be surprised, needs some kind of a DJ. All professional teams have DJs. Right. Exactly. So the whole thing is, is, is how many artists do you uh, perform with? Um, I mean, how many? I mean, I don't know how it comes out. I don't want to sound like a do corn I, dog. No, you don't. But like, how no. many rap groups, crews, posses, whatever the fuck y'all call it in the uh, one eight, <laughs> whatever y'all, whatever it is now. So as of, as of recent, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's been YTC and Richie West, a young dread out of Tampa. YTC is one guy. No, it's two. It's a group. They're brothers. Uh, Richie West and Young Dread. We're gonna get to one of their songs in a little bit. Okay. Too. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, did you get synced up and everything's good? Yeah, everything. Right. We're good, money. Um, I got. With, I'm gonna get to that too soon. But um, basically them, and then as of new FIFA game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, I love, I'll be doing all, at home. Yeah, I'll be doing all their performances and stuff if I'm not. If, you know. Oh, look at this. Yeah, man. This is a stupid problem, but it's a problem nonetheless. This shit gonna work eventually. But you live right now? What's up with it? Yes, sir. The microphone picks up the paper burner, you know? Yes, sir. FIFA gang shit. You know it? All right, so now, now you're doing, okay, so Y, whatever, YTC. Right. And then what else? And as of recent, FIFA gang. One more time. Say it slower. FIFA gang. All right. F1, F8. So see, the thing about it is, is when somebody goes to look up your social media, they might not have the ear. So F1, they have, you have to say it slow yeah. and clear so they can look you up. That's how I talk. I apologize. No, everybody who... who they, I'm because, Puerto Rican, so you don't go... <laughs> right? You know how that go. You got the... All right. Mm -hmm. I got a little, you know what I'm saying? But, um... But nah. By way of Rochester or wherever the fuck he said he's from. Oh, Providence. 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 By way of Providence. He's so G. But um, so you've got this group from Cross the River, FIFA. FIFA gang. FIFA gang. Now, did, I, did you DJ? Do you DJ for Dupre and all them as well? I mean, yeah, whatever definitely. they I mean, need. And, and basically, it's whatever the fuck do, they if need. If I do like uh, performances with like a promoter or something, yeah, they'll come and bring me their music and I do their sets here too. But like, as far as like solid shows, like if they got a show, I'm their DJ. If YTC 
if Spinatic's not DJing for them, nine out of ten times I'll be there DJing for them. And like I said, we did Boston, we did uh, South Carolina, North Carolina. Now, do you do it on the bass level now, where you're in a studio, you do the beats, and you help them cut oh, records? Oh no, 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 you're not in that no. part. We're talking, we're talking me pushing the records when they're already done. And no, 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 right. I'm asking as far talking, as you know, we're talking touring. Mm -hmm. you know oh, saying? absolutely, no it. doubt. I don't, I, as far as like producing for them, no, no, I don't do, I don't do anything okay. like that. Uh. -uh. I'm one of those rare DJs that doesn't produce. Right. I don't have the patience for it. Understood. You know what I'm saying? Understood. That's just me. So what's next for DJ Damage? Um, what, is, what, what, what is it? Do you have uh, <clears throat> projects, uh, passions? Do you have a short-term project, long-term goal? What um, I've been doing recently is... Um, you don't have to divulge your secret info. Nah. But, you know. <laughs> um, I'm a mixtape DJ as well. I put mixtapes out and you know put them online and stuff and put some lo put indie artists on there as well. All right, explain you know, that to me. Okay. All right, so here's the deal. I missed the whole mixtape phenomenon, but I was in the bubble. Okay. Taking the kids to school, listening to talk radio. That's why I have a podcast. A mixtape is basically the easiest way a DJ could get out. Just put it like that. The DJ and the artist, right? Absolutely, because the DJ helps the artist and the artist helps the DJ. Now, you have artists that, for example, me, I got I got artists, mainstream artists to host these mixtapes, and it gains more of an attention to the eye that, you know what I'm saying? For example, if they're a fan, my f first artist I got to do a mixtape for me was Project Pat. That was my whole That's a big motherfucking three, name you know right saying? there. Um, that, was my, that was my first uh, tape that had a... Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, that caliber host, and shh, we ran it up. We damn near had a hundred thousand. We damn near had a hundred thousand streams. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, but that was just like I said. I'm at, I'm all the way at volume twelve right now. I'm about to work on volume thirteen. So it's my hold that series. Basically, the mixtape series that that got me out. So does is now again? I'm asking an honest mm -hmm. question. Mixtape is that a loophole that y'all can take other people's music and cut hip hop on top of it? Not stealing. I'm mm -hmm. asking as far I'm as because I've heard a lot of beats that knew the mixtape and they're cutting over other people's music by calling it a mixtape. Is that legal? If you sell it. Now that's how that's like for example, if you you can't sell somebody else's music. That just doesn't make any sense. Um, especially, like, it's just not right. Me, mixtapes are free. You know what I'm saying? Mixtapes, I put... You can go around, you got to step over. Oh, yeah, you have to just pull it out of the way. You can figure it out. The universe likes all the static. They like the shit stopping. And <laughs> shit, they're like, what's going on? What's going on? What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> they also like to try to tell me when I say something wrong or if I say it's a statistic and it's fucked up. All my statistics are wrong. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, whatever you want. You just drag it out. I don't even know. My my producer's old and ratchet. Oh, you good. <laughs> Motherfucker. I like ratchet. Yeah, he's all right. Oh, we got uh, he's, he's what made this happen, so he can't, <laughs> I can't hate on him. He, he created all of this. So, FIFA gang, two-thirds of the FIFA gang left the building. Did I say it right? Yeah, you said it right. Oh, shit. Holler at you, boy. Right, shout out, I yeah. still fuck shout up. Shout out Cal here, man. Hundo is fucking. I, I can't get his name right for shit to find oh, no. it on YouTube. So now I have it saved Green in my Hondo? favorites. Yeah, That's my boy right so there. I can. Yeah, I, I listen. I rock his shit. He's dope, at, right? on when I'm driving Uber. He's dope, and they're man. always we're asking. Gonna get, we're gonna get you some shout outs in a little bit too, man. Because one thing about me. Man, fuck all y'all three five two hip hop. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. You know I got number love. Thing about I'm, me is I don't I don't stamp I don't stamp bullshit. Hey Rambo, you next, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying I don't stamp bullshit. I don't get behind bullshit. I never want to taint my name on bullshit. That's my biggest. That's not a fear. He's getting but, off but now. My biggest prevention. The weed done kicked in. I don't. I don't co-sign bullshit. I just don't. Um, well, we're going on. Damage topic. does not co-sign bullshit. Do co-sign bullshit. You got public service announcement. That's right. <laughs> but um, nah. Um, going back to what you said about right. the mixtape. Right, mixtape. Talk to me about. Okay, this is how I'm trying to understand it, man. I, I want to embrace. This it. is how I do my mixtapes. What I do is I, well, nine out of ten times I do it right then and there. I put it together and I put it out. I go online, I go through the email, see what's sent to me. A lot of labels send me music all day, so I get artists' music months before it's released. I'm giving that permission to call, they call break it, meaning... Oh, okay. The first so, ones to okay, so that's that's a, that's a seedling of curiosity. So they give you a permission statement. For, you're as a DJ, 
Right, right, right. But this is this is common for you. But I no, actually, I don't know. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. What's interesting is is this is what people are like. Oh, you know, I would I've I've never even thought about this aspect of the business. So you get a, a a permission like a like almost like a legal thing that you can keep that. And no, you can use their music? They just, send, they just send me music. Right. Because so, like, everything's cause free I, these I don't days. Sell it. Everything's yeah, out and about. Now, how I do it is, um, how I do it is I grab, you know what I'm saying, some of the mainstream songs, like mixtape cuts and stuff like that, singles that artists, mainstream artists may have just put out that day or the night before. Me, I like putting out stuff that's brand, brand new, especially if it's, it's just mainstream shit. Right. So, right after that, I leave like the last 10 slots for indie artists. You know what I'm saying? Give them a platform to put their music out. Right. And that's just how I've been doing it. And I've been getting, um, for example, we have other artists that have hosted mixtapes for me. Um, we're talking we're talking Young Breed from Maybach Music. Um, we're talking uh, Trap Beckham, shout out to Trap Beckham. Um, young Scooter, shout out to Young Scooter. Um, different artists like that. And just it's just... It's a way of getting it out. My mixtapes do no less than 10,000 on any side I put it on. This just popped in my head. I was telling you about how Anzi and I are going to be, shout out Anzi from Anzi okay. Magazine. We're going to be doing an internet radio show. Okay. Why don't you give me, even if you call it in, you give me like a DJ Damage, you know. A tag or something? No, like what's hot? What 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 oh, you got yeah, cooking this yeah, week? Yeah, of course. And then you just cut a little sample and then you link it. Boom. You see what I'm saying? And then there's a link and then it'll go to your shit. But it'll be something that you can contribute. Yeah, I do that, I do that on quite a few radio, online radio stations now. So yeah, definitely. See, that's bullshit, man. I'm trying to break out some new shit and you're telling me you, everybody man. already does it. That's like, I'm an old head trying to come up like, get, gonna, I got it, see? They're going to get a clear understanding of the night. He's like, he's he's like I, got, I got it, see? We're going to play music while we do the show. Right. <laughs> it's brand new shit, man. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Like, I'm out of the, I just got out of the bubble, yeah, you know? Yeah, so no, you. My, kids, my kids just roll their eyes. They're like, Dad, you know? So it's right. like, you know, you got to understand. I was cool once, man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to reclaim what I had. Right. But um, but seriously, so all right, so mixtapes. So you're cutting mixtapes, and what do you do? You put it out. Just put them out on um, on streaming sites. So you uh, at the end, we'll do your social platform. You can say it, and then when we upload the video, everybody hears this every fucking week. I explain this every time. We upload the video. We put all your social info on the comment box so everyone can click across. It's all linked together. Then the vision would be: this is how I saw, this is how I see YouTube and the podcast platform. I'm gonna build clients or uh, uh, followers. Obviously, monetize it at four thousand. Obviously, right. however, between all my social media, I got about seven thousand overall. Mm-hmm. We put out like an LTO uh, particular barbarian DJ damage shirt. See what I'm saying? We put it out for like one month, sell them for uh, twenty five dollars a piece or two for up. forty, and then we split the profits. Run it up. Here's the deal: if you have seven thousand people and you have however many you have, and you put that shit out, and five hundred people buy it, it's money. One hundred people buy it. Feel me? And then we pay for the shirts. Then we come up with a new design. Mm-hmm. Because I got already got all the motherfucking designs for the jersey shirts, good quality polo, uh, not polos, the the, the t shirts, right? Um, and the the image on the front, boom boom bam, mm-hmm. bim bim bap, and we don't even have to touch this stuff. They ship it. Well, no, we'll ship it out from here. But I already got shipping and receiving with my partners. Okay. So I got two partners. One's bricks and mortar. The other one is shipping and receiving. So the vision is, I sell, I own a libido pill. Which oh, yeah. is a, like a, vi- a natural Viagra. Okay. I sell that motherfucker online. I have ArticulateBarbarian.com, and there's a branch of it called Bro Science. Mm. Bro Science is just the definition of Bro Science is, hey, yo, bro, I tried this and it works real good. That's Bro Science. So w- everything I put on there. I'm tried and true on. So my dick pill, it's, it's not a joke. It's not even gross. It's a legitimate thing. I'm in the villages, homeboy. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? So the thing is, is these pills, you can chop trees down with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, the point is, 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 hey, bro, I tried this and it works. So that's the whole thing, you know, with, with merchandise especially. I got, you know, that's what I can't. I can't stress it enough because once everything is up and moving, we can link your merch to my merch. 
You see? Right. And then people can buy your stuff by way of my site. They can click to go to your site. So it's important that we get all of our ducks in a row and it, I enjoy seeing, you know, I like seeing people in the hustle. So before we start getting to where I'm going to get on my soapbox, let's get back to you. Okay. Everybody complains. You talk too much. You fucking, you're hogging all the time. So let's get back to you. So now, mixtapes, you put out shit. What's next? You got a couple groups that you're working with. Mm -hmm. You're doing stage shows. You're doing, you're booking. Now, do you, let me ask you, we have agents and managers. Do you get to a certain point where you, that's the direction you go? Or do you? I've tried it and it doesn't work. No one can do you better than you. Right, I agree. I agree. Half the time, these people can't even manage their own life. That I agree with too. supposed to manage yours. That's how I see. I do all my own bookings. I do all my own everything. Well, I, let me just plant this seed. Because one of my comedians who's super successful, <laughs> we spent about 45 minutes talking about his management and agent comp agency company. Okay. So I think what the difference is, is the sifting through the bullshit. But it's the deal is, you because I'm a promoter. Yeah. You're a fucking promoter if you want to be, because you want to put a show together. Everybody's a promoter. Everybody's a manager. Everybody. Somebody. So the thing about it is, is, is I'm what I'm. The direction that I'm trying to get to is what he explained is, is the the agency that he works with. Mm -hmm. You can't even approach them until your point. You're on point with their requirements. Absolutely. That's like the Jerry Maguire of agents you know what I'm saying yeah, you gotta so like efficient. once you bring that to them then improv circuit for a comedian mm -hmm. you know comedy zone bonkers they book it for you and and what right, and, right, and, right. and 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 that's why I'm asking so in in theory there is such a thing however like in comedy and everything well, else yeah, there's a lot of bullshit yeah, it's, it's, yeah. there's a lot of bullshit in between you know, so that's, that's, that's that. the difference between an agency and a, and a, right. and a, a manager. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Because people, like I said, man, people can half the time balance their own life. So when you put somebody else, so you put your trust in somebody to put you, with your career, right? With what you're doing, with your money at the end of the day, because they're control of how much money you're making. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Uh, Listen, like, I heard a bunch of motorcycles go by and they're coming in. <laughs> what happened? I heard all the motorcycles coming in, y'all come in. What happened? The motorcycles went by, y'all came in. <laughs> we chillin', man. We're about to wrap this thing up here and get to you three. Oh, man. Hey, man. Hey, the, some of the biggest part decisions in your life comes with a waiting game. Sorry about that, bro. Y'all are antsy. I can tell, man. This guy right here, he's chill as fuck. He's like, whatever, oh, dog. Boy, what are you talking? What are you talking to somebody over there? He's just like, I'm just. You, I hear you mumbling over there, goddamn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow, what what do you got going on as far as an end? Do you have a hobby? Do you have something else? That what what do you do that gets away from? Like you get, have to get away from this. Like, well, see, here's the thing, and I'm and I. This is a problem that I have. They say you need a hobby, separate from what you do. But my biggest passion is what I do. Right. So I it's just a difficult. About, I was just about to so, say that. So, but but you know, I try. Shout out, you know, uh, uh, Shauna Mowry. She's gonna be coming on my show. She's a yoga master, so we're gonna do some vlogging with my fat ass doing yoga with her. Yeah. So we're gonna try some new shit. But you know, do you have like a hobby? You know, you might do clay shooting or golf. Or, I mean, you play tennis. You do anything, or is it just wake up in the morning? You like goddamn what's his name? Um, who's that dude who does all them shits for future and shit? Metrodome. The the yeah, yeah, that motherfucker. That motherfucker. All he does is sleep and mix music. Man, you can hate on him if you want. I don't know the politics, nah, but I've seen some weird vlogs about him where it's just all night, man. That motherfucker is just wired, smoking that fire, you know what? and <laughs> just fucking playing nah, shit. No, but I mean, it's it's the it's the DJ for me. It's the DJ thing. Family second, you know what I'm saying? Kid second, you know what I'm saying? But my free time with my son. Oh, appreciate you, my boy. But yeah, when I'm yeah, everybody smokes blunts, man. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I smoke white boys. I smoke, forgive me. Speaking about white boys, we gonna. I got a new sponsorship, man. Oh. 
You know what I'm saying? It's, it's well, hold on. Stop the presses. Sponsored. This man shows sponsored. up with sponsors. <laughs> I, hey, listen. You're, ding, ding, ding. This is a record. Get into this it, is man. the first sponsored. We gonna get into it, man. So this is the man. first sponsored. Uh, sponsors. Uh, so this motherfucker shows up promoting sponsors. So you know let's let's see what new, you got. Talk new, shout out new time endeavor, before new, we hit the uh, uh, message to the universe. New let's endeavor. Go. You know what I'm saying? New. Um, no. New sponsorship, new par partnership is with Empire Rolling Papers. You know what I'm saying? They look like hundred dollar bills. Hundred dollar bill paper. rolling papers. I'm the only person in this area. <laughs> now, okay. I'm, 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 I'm uh, is it? Do you want to go through your sponsors before I start shitting on it? I'm a hate. I'm gonna throw a little hate. I'm gonna tell you why. Go ahead. They pay, so run it up. You not that I'm hating on the paper at all, but you should have come in here with all that shit with blunt. You should have come rolled with this, and you should have been like, "Ding, we're smoking today with Papa." You know, we ain't going nowhere. We we here. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I would have had all this. Yeah. You know when when you know I would have had this shit rolled up and ready in queue. So let's let's let, let me do a better job at this than you. Yes, sir. Because you're sponsored by this man's got rolling papers that are hundred dollar bills. What do they order online Or do they go to the nearest head shop No you can't get them out here You gotta go You gotta, you gotta go. order them through DJ Damage mm -hmm. And DJ Damage Rick, is info Rick Ross was a former partner Man you gonna tell us how to order it You gotta order it through He don't me. know they order it through me. That's all I got to tell you. DJ Damage, look them up, look them up, look them up. Look, you got to order it through yeah, me. That's DJ man. Space man. Damage on Facebook. Man, 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 man. Uh, Instagram, DJ Damage 1989. Uh, my email, DJ Damage 401352 at Gmail. There we go. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Twitter, 1989 underscore JC. <laughs> Facebook, uh, DJ Damage. Okay, it. so there you go. Hundred dollar bill. All right, let me see. Hold on. The blue A. The blue A. Hundred dollar bill. The blue A. See that? The the blue A. The blue A. So there we go. What else you got? What other sponsors? Uh, Tape Hustlers is basically a independent artist site. You know what I'm saying? Where they uh, they merge. They're actually um, with um, Columbia Record Pool. That's right. the Columbia Records. Also with. Um, this is 50.com. You know what I'm saying? Um, no, I don't know what you're saying. You but if you say it clear, we'll learn. We'll learn. We'll learn. <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, they're affiliated, like I said, with this is 50.com and ver uh, various other. This is 50.com. Mm -hmm. What is this is 50 dollars? That's 50 cents blocks. Got it. Okay. That's it. You'll learn today, my boy. I'm rocking it, man. I'm, hey, hey, I'm You're downloading right. this information. You know what I'm saying? I'm downloading this information. I'm also, I'm also, Granted, it's probably coming in a little bit fucked up on the Matrix, but it's coming. It's all good. I'm also with another independent site called Hip Hop Everything. You know what I'm saying? Is that Shout hiphopeverything.com if they want to look it up? Hip Hop Everything for real. For real. Mm -hmm. For real. For real. For real. You know what I'm saying? Uh, other than that, YTC and Street Runners. Uh, it's another. You know what I'm saying? Um, well, we'll the, let's, not, let's not go shout outs. We'll do that at the end. No, no, I'm saying. I'm so you, yeah, so right now, okay. You know what I'm saying that's. Uh, Those Drake. are sponsors. No, that's who I'm with. Okay, these are everybody with. that I named is who I'm with. That's gotcha. Family, that's family. Who I work love, with. respect, right. business, shout out, business, everything, everything. All right. In a circle. All you motherfuckers, and, line up. Start hit me up on Facebook. We gotta get you through here, man. I'm trying to get you all yeah, done. Yeah, definitely. Go f fuck with them, man. Fuck with them, man. Fuck with them. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck with like, them, man. And as of new FIFA game, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, there's a lot next. of shit. There's a lot of shit on the way, man. Damn Crest the Rebel Boys. Damn boy. I just shout out small towns, man. I love it. You know how much pussy I'm chasing across the river? Scandalous. It's a scandalous. You know how much you don't want out there? You know what I'm Dude, don't don't shit on my little yeah. that's my little spot. And actually, Crystal River is not my little spot, but I have I have chased some POFs out there before. <laughs> this dude, man. So, but now, nah, man, been, like I said, it's basically um, that's that's who I'm working with. Yeah, and I want to go on record say I'm officially sponsored by Four by Four Roller Skating Wheels. We're bringing the tradition back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the do clothing. You know oh I'm shit! Saying? Look at oh yeah. I wanted to ask you because you're one of the guys where your little shit matches. I like that premeditated hustle. Now what is that? 
Oh, you gotta ask. Like he worked for a plumbing company. I'm gonna do clothing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he's doing the clothing. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. He's out of Jacksonville. All right. We'll tell him if he's ever in town. We'd love to have him come out on the show. Oh, cool. Shout out uh, Antoine Witter, EBWB. He's been on the show before. Fashion designer. Twist this up. Yeah, twist, twist that hundred dollar bill up. We so baller. We smoke hundred dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so at, while these boys are uh, wrapping up and putting together some uh, Turkish blend, that's right. Do you have anything you want to wrap up before I get you on that message to the universe? Let's write a song real quick, man. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. Let's let's hit some um, music. So hold up. I got, a, I got a record, man. I'm gonna put this shit right here, here. Mm-hmm. All right, so that way we're gonna turn it on. Mm-hmm. It's on already. We yeah, good. Now, it's a priority record. Is that now. you? All right. Yeah, it's a priority. All right, record. so we're gonna play and now. Turn it up all the way on your end, cause mine's right, and then we'll back it down a hair. Uh, so that way it'll play clear, and if you like, you can turn it up once we hear out clear. You. But this is a Bose, a Bosey. <laughs> so, uh, right, right. But shout out to Young Dread, man. We got a single that we're working like crazy right now. It's called Blue Strips. It all makes sense. That's why, that's why I say everything I do makes sense. Blue. Blue strips, meaning the new hundred dollar bills have those blue strips on. Okay. Now you get, you'll get it once you hear the song. All right. That's a, that's a record we've been working like crazy. All right, let's hear. I'm gonna put the microphone over. I'm gonna put the microphone over here. The universe don't mind if I stop talking. Okay. Run that. But yeah, FIFA Gang gonna play some new shit for y'all too, man. But um, this is Young Dread. Are we on? Young Dread, Blue Strips. Are we on? Yeah, we shit. good. Sure yeah, uh, Alright. It all makes sense. In the yeah. video, in the video, smoking yeah. one of those. Yeah. No money, who it is? So many racks on the name. Yeah. I don't know what to do with it. So many where's the Tempo. 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 Tempo.
Three minutes, six seconds. I've been noticing songs got shorter all of a sudden, so I've been asking if that was going to... But it, 306 been songs, is still, 306 is right around. There's the artists, uh, there's there's artists now who yeah. drop a verse, who drop a hook, verse, hook, done. Song, you know what I'm saying? You, you, do y'all do y'all notice that them two and a half minute songs? I'm like, what the fuck is that? But I, I'm new you to can't them, understand you know? half the shit. Well, yeah, and whatever. But the thing is, is is like, is the universe? I mean, is the world? Are kids getting so tight on time that they need a two minute song? They can't even get a three minute. It's just song? lazy. I got two minute songs. Yeah. And my two minute songs. It's oh. lazy. It's what it is. It's lazy. It's, it's like like songs, the hardest song. I look, that's the, what I'm asking. Look, I'm not even hating. Yeah, well, we'll get to that in a second. Let's let's wrap this dude up. Let's wrap. Let's this dude up DJ focus <laughs> let's wrap this up we went and then we'll start on on the next one right right so uh, at this point we're gonna do the message to the universe I've already explained the whole premise the universe fucking listens to it every week so they're gonna they, they know it by heart so whatever you say now technically if nothing goes bad a hundred years from now they'll be able to look back and see what you had to say so a hundred years from now you're great 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 whatever Grandson, granddaughter. Just see, just know that the work. Look at the fucking camera. Talk to the That's universe, true. man. They're just know, at you, just man. know. They want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Eating the damn popcorn, listening to every word you say. No, enjoy it, like I said. But not. Nah, um, just know the work we put in now is. You gonna see later, when when we when we overseas with it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <clears throat> success. Put the put the exactly. You know what? If I can PS that for saying this is not over after after all, can we discuss work ethic? Can we discuss? Oh, absolutely. I mean, how, listen. Th th does the world need to understand that sometimes you got to work a little while for free or no money or it costs you money, so that way to to get to that next level. I spend. You know how much money I spend on my own travel. Oh, hello. So the thing about it is, is <laughs> I listen to a podcast. I talked about this before. Uh, we can definitely talk about that. Where. Two live crew, Luke Skywalker down in Miami, booked, booked, Run DMC after they dropped Raising Hell mm. for five hundred dollars. Why? Because ten thousand people were at the show and all of them got that information and then they went and bought the albums. So the point is, is even when Run DMC was at platinum with Raising Hell or gold by the time they came down here. They were still running. Listen, I opened for a big comedian a couple of times, and these guys don't come out here for big money. They come out here by the time they put yeah. a few together, they get a little paycheck in between TV gigs. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. It's still a grind every day. It's always a grind. So the, the work ethic, young people today, they think everything's $50 an hour, or if I'm lucky, a lot of times it's $100 an hour. So they don't know. And they, they have no common sense. And the thing about it is somebody else books them and that ruins the whole fucking thing. You know what I mean? Right. So talk to them about work ethic before we break you off to the grind, next. grind, man. It's just you can't, you can't skip the grind. It just doesn't make sense. It, everything is a process. You got to trust your process. Everything is timing. I have a blueprint. The thing about it is you got to know why you're doing what you're doing. Right. And if you put in the work, it's, you ain't going to do nothing for no reason. I know where I'm going to be 10 years from now. And that's why I ask people, well, do you know what you, you know why right. you're doing this? I've, I've been to Atlanta putting posters, dropping CDs in gas stations, talking about hitting 200 blocks, running back and mm -hmm. forth. I've put in groundwork, hanging posters, uh, promoting other artists. You know what I'm saying? Touring, hitting different states. Sometimes sleeping two people on one side of one side of bed, mm -hmm. one side to the other. Mm -hmm. Sleeping in the Sprinter. It's, it's part of the game. That's right. It's work. Paying your own travel, paying people, it's spending money. Paying your own travel sucks. God, you have no idea when somebody says you get paid two hundred dollars or five hundred dollars, man. It's a part of the game, man. I've been underpaid. I've been under. Oh my God, it's 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 a golf game. That's what I tell people. It's my golf hobby for now. I I can fortunately say I've never. There's never been a gig I've never not been paid. Right. It not have been. It may have not been the bag, mm -hmm. but it's at least it's a bag. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. But it's just one of them things where you gotta. You, sometimes you gotta do shit you don't want to do to sacrifice. No doubt. You think about it. Times you spend from your family is a sacrifice. No doubt. Time you lose sleep Get it. is a sacrifice. Time you you spend money on shit you don't want to, but you know you need it. 
Stop Yeah artists like complain. food Artists complain all the time And that's the problem with artists they, Some have the budget But don't have the guidance And don't right. have the guidance And don't have the budget Right You know what I'm saying And It's just one of those things Where some artists They think everything is free right. They don't know They don't know what it takes I've been doing this for years And right. still haven't I, I mean I I've done FM radio I've done online radio Like I said I've done touring I've Performed I've been DJing in front of the, Some of the biggest artists You know what I'm saying And People don't even know that That's what I mean As far as with a D, As a DJ You get a little more privacy Right But Going back to the work I've been Like I said Underpaid Right Underappreciated mm -hmm. DJing for hours For Like I said Underpaid basically it's part of the game right. And it got me to bigger platforms though right. And I know that No doubt You know what Everything I'm saying? Everything is a stepping stone Let me tell you something well, my, I have a second son His name is Aiden, right? He's one years old um, Are you familiar with the Hot Boys? Lil Wayne, yeah, yeah, Juvenile yeah. Okay, now That was um, still my era <laughs> All right. So Hot, Hot Boy Turk I did a show with him You know what I'm saying? Uh, Turk, the one that was in jail you know what I'm saying? He was released or whatever. Started doing, started doing shows, getting back out there. He did a show. I did a show with him in Tampa. Was with him the whole night. Let got did, took him to after party and everything like that. In studio went back home. I swear I got to the house at six o'clock. Seven o'clock I get a phone call. Her water broke. I had to drive from Tampa to Ocala. Mm -hmm. Now listen to this. I was in the hospital the entire day until my son was born. I cut that cord, make sure he was fine, hit the road, had a booking that night. Damn right. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a sacrifice. Damn right. It's sacrifice. Like, it came that same night, came back from Tampa, came from Orlando actually. From Long in Longwood, Longwood, yeah, Florida. Yeah, yeah. I drove North back. Orlando. I remember like it was Shout just out Longwood. You feel what I'm saying? I remember like it was never for, I'll never forget it. And I drove right back to the hospital. Fell asleep holding my son the entire night. Didn't mm -hmm. even sleep. I told you. <laughs> back on the road. It's, it's, it's sacrifice. Right. You know what I'm saying? Time you spend from your family, like I said. Time you spend from yourself. Because you can lose yourself and it's quick. Quick. You get so wrapped up in this that it becomes you. And I had that issue before. That's why I, for the last couple months I had, I had a promoter. that was damn near like a brother named, me, named, named G Live. His name was Wolf from Orlando. He was murdered. I'm saying uh, in a car accident. Right. He, me and him used to do hella shows. I'm talking like Miami, um, Orlando, Tampa, back to back during the regular week. Nothing. Every random, every other week type shit. Mm -hmm. Just putting me on, putting me in front of different, different people that nobody else would ever do that for. Right. You get what I'm saying? Right. It's like I feel like God puts people in your life for a reason. Right. And He opened those doors for me. And as soon as those doors were open, He passed away. And that's um, you know what I'm saying, and it's, it's crazy, man. And that took me from the game. I tell you, when I found out, I smashed my iPhone Seven. They didn't even care to fix it. it. Was out three months. Nobody could contact me. Mm -hmm. Only way you could contact me was Facebook Messenger. I didn't take phone calls. Nothing it took me out of the game. See that that's but happening when you're young. I After you snap. break that iPhone pad, you be like, all right, that'll be the last. It's time just, I, do I just that. didn't want to deal with nothing. Next time, I'll just turn it off. I would go to gigs. <laughs> I would go. To <laughs> That's what happens when you get older, dog. You just turn it off. Right, right, right. <laughs> but you got like you got to understand that person became like a brother to me. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So that kind well, of took, this is like last year actually. I missed yeah. three tours because of that. Yeah. I just didn't care. Like I just didn't care about anything. But in my point of this is everything's a sacrifice. You got to keep going. Right. If you really want this, nothing's gonna get in your way. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta put in the work. You gotta you gotta go through the shit to get to where you wanna go. It doesn't happen overnight, and if it does, it ain't gonna last long. Real shit, universe. Ladies and gentlemen, this is DJ Damage. I'm the Articular Barbarian. We are gonna wrap this episode up because we got another one right behind it. Yes, sir. We're working tonight. You know it. Love, peace, chicken grease. We out here. Peace. Gang. Yeah, man.